Hey there, welcome. Uh, my name is James. I am the church office manager here at Our Lady of Peace and also someone who uh, helps out with communications and things like that. So today, um, hopefully this is the first in a series of videos we can do uh, introducing you to the staff. Um, we're here in the St. Paul studio at Our Lady of Peace. Um, and today I'm here with Jocelyn Johnson, who um, we'll get into her title in a few seconds. But she was uh, brought on the team here in August? September? Late September. Late September. Time flies. Um, and so, yeah, I thought we'd take a little bit of time to chat and let everyone get to know her and me get to know her a little bit better. And um, so let's start, Jocelyn. Um, what is your actual title? Do you know? The title I was hired under is Youth and Young Adult Coordinator. And the goal in that was to include and get the point across that I'm covering middle school, high school, and young adults. The working transitional title is simply Youth Minister, because that's easy for people to understand. Sure, sure. I'm happy to be referred to as either or anything else. Yeah, so if you guys have noticed, if you've come to OLP, um, Justin's been referred to as the coordinator of Youth and Young Adult Ministry. She's been referred to as the Youth and Young Adult Minister. She's been referred to as the Youth Minister. Uh, probably easiest to just call her Jocelyn and move on. Great, so I was curious, and I think it's always helpful to get a little background on people. So um, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself, where you come from, uh, all that, and how you ended up here at OLP. Sure, yeah. So I grew up in Becker, which is near St. Cloud, Central Minnesota, and um, yeah, grew up in a loosely Catholic family raised Catholic, received all my sacraments, and then decided that I wanted to be Protestant for a minute. Went to Bethel University in St. Paul and studied youth ministry. I had a great youth group growing up and wanted to provide that same environment for other young people. Uh, while I was at Bethel, I spent a semester in Uganda, where the witness of Catholics there really brought me back to the Catholic faith. Um, so graduated with a youth ministry degree from Bethel, and then did NET, net for a year, um, served with NET Ministries as a missionary. And since then, I've done a variety of different things, including working as a barista, um, working in childcare programming for kindergarten through fifth graders, um, and working at Feed My Starving Children for a number of years, as well as a lot of youth ministry part time and on a volunteer basis. Yeah. Um, yeah, I also went to a Protestant college for undergrad, so I know that life. Um, and I also have worked with children. I've not been a barista, though, so got me there. Um, cool. So you talked about Uganda and Nat, and you said, you went to Uganda first, and then after that became uh, a net missionary. So what was, why did you end up going to Uganda? What was your... Yeah, so growing up, I'd always wanted to go to Africa. I'm not really sure even where that came from. Um, elephants have been my favorite animal for a long time, so that might have been part of the inspiration. Um, yeah, and Bethel has a number of great study abroad programs, and the one in Uganda just happened to credits would transfer the best for my program. And so I spent a semester um, living and studying at Uganda Christian University which is in a suburb just outside of the capital of Uganda. And while I was there, I took classes with other Ugandan students, took classes with other students in my program, which was 18 of us from different Christian colleges around the US. And yeah, had a Ugandan roommate and did an internship at a local after-school children's ministry, helping young Ugandan kids with homework and learning English and played some games with them as well. Nice, did you pick up any of the uh language there? Or? A few words. So <laughs> English is the official language of Uganda, so anyone who's been through at least fifth or sixth grade speaks English fluently, so it makes it really easy to just stay in English. Um, there's also about 55 or more different languages spoken based on which district or region that you're in of the country, so a yeah. few words in a couple of the different local languages, but not much. Yeah, I have a friend from Cameroon who, uh, French is their, their official language, but he speaks all of the different tribal languages. Uh, mm -hmm. It's an interesting thing that we don't do here, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then, um, what was what you say was probably one of like of the most memorable experiences when you were there in Uganda? Yeah, so like I said, we were in a suburb of the capital for most of the semester. We did spend a week um, at a rural homestay. So each of us in my program were placed with a different family. Um, basically, just saw that family and their neighbors for a whole week, um, and these families aren't living in extreme poverty, but are living in really rural circumstances. So off in the village, you have to walk to a well to go get your water, um, very little electricity. Um, but yeah, kids have access to education, they have access to healthcare, so they're doing really well, but living a really simple life. Um, and that was just really impactful for me to see 
the simplicity of that lifestyle mm -hmm. and to learn different things, like carrying a 10 gallon jug of water in my head and <laughs> had a lot of laughs about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, but just being with that family and the, the impact of the ministry of presence. Um, they spoke some English, but not a lot. I didn't speak a lot of their language, so just being with them and that importance of presence in being with people. Sure. Um, and you mentioned the, the Catholic witness in Uganda. Can you talk a little bit more about what about that made you go, oh, this is actually a thing? Yeah, so at the time that I went to Uganda and first got there, I was still really wrestling with the Catholic faith and just really struggling to understand quite a few different things, but in particular, uh, the Eucharist. Um, my big question growing up and in late high school was, if, if the Eucharist is really a presence of Christ, then why isn't the congregation more joyful? Mm -hmm. um, and one of my classmates on my semester had also grown up Catholic and was kind of wrestling with Catholic beliefs as well. And she ended up staying with a Catholic host family in Uganda for most of the semester. And so I went to mass with them a few times and just really was struck by, in particular, the joy of the Ugandan Catholics in their worship. Um, and the mass was the same. The universal church really became clear to me. Mm -hmm. um, I realized at one mass in particular that mass was going on in my home parish at the same time with the time change. All the prayers were in English, so the same prayers that I was saying, which to see see their joy and see their witness and recognize the, the beauty of the universal church. Nice. Um, so then you came back from Uganda and you graduated and then you became a net missionary. I don't think a ton of, at least our community, know about net. So I wondered if you could just tell us a little bit about NET, what their kind of goal is, and how that uh, affected your life, and how what that looked like when you were serving with them. Definitely, yeah. So NET Ministries is a nonprofit based out of West St. Paul here in Minnesota, um, and they train and equip now over 150 missionaries, but about 150 when I served. Um, college age missionaries, so 18 to 28 years old, who have largely just graduated from high school, just graduated from college, are looking to spend a year of service. And so net missionaries serve for nine months, and they either serve on a retreat team or on a discipleship team. So I was on a retreat team, and so my team had a 12-passenger van. There were 12 of us on the team. We got in that van and traveled around the country. So we went to Iowa and Louisiana and Texas um, and led retreats for middle school and high school students at various Catholic churches and schools around the country. Um, what would you say about that experience for you either was transformative or strengthened your faith or you know, helped you decide that you wanted to go into ministry? Yeah, I think I just recognized in leading retreats the importance of both retreats where young people get to meet people for just a few hours and that sort of relational ministry, but also just really the importance of long-term ministry um, and young people having examples in their life who are there for the long haul. I just recognized um, in a lot of ways the impact that net retreats had, the retreats that we were leading, but also the impact that the people in their lives who were there for the long haul had on their lives, and that that was kind of what I wanted to do, was do more long-term relational ministry instead of those short-term, um, big, flashy retreats. Sure. Um, so kind of going from that into now here at OLP, um, along those lines of kind of long-term accompaniment, um, now that you've gotten your feet wet here at OLP, do you have a, a kind of vision or a goal in mind for what you're um, wanting to move towards here, or what you're wanting to get to with the youth and new adults here? Yeah, I think the hope is just to continue to build a community of relationships where people can thrive um, and also grow closer to Christ and grow closer to each other um, through learning and through service as well. Um, and to continue to integrate and allow young adults to be ministering to high schoolers and high schoolers to be ministering to middle schoolers. Um, in one big system, um, but also my vision would be and my hope would be to have programs for people at all ages and also all levels so that we have social events that they can invite their friends to who maybe aren't even Catholic or aren't practicing their faith and they feel welcome to come to those and then to dive deeper and do a Bible study and have programs for people of, of all levels. Yeah, that's great. Um, it's, you know, you get really in the weeds and really technical and talk about pre-evangelization and evangelization and I think it's really important. Um, I think we're starting to do a good job of that here at OLP with our community events with things like Pumpkin Patch and the Party of Patch we just had. Um, with the Breakfast and Babies thing that's just started up that event and then uh, with Come to the Stable, which I know you haven't been to yet, but um, that's always a really great event in terms of getting people to come to the parish and to meet the community and kind of interact with the community and this gives us an opportunity to start building relationships with those people that hopefully mm -hmm. foster them further down the line. It's great. Um, you've kind of already touched on this, but um, what would you say 
for you in doing um, ministry with teenagers and young adults is the most important factor, or maybe the the most difficult barrier, whichever way you want to go with that, mm-hmm. to um, doing ministry. Yeah, I would say relationship for both. Um, relational ministry is the most effective ministry. That's what Jesus did. I look at Jesus in the Gospels, and he had his core team of three people um, that he was in deep relationship with, and then he had the disciples, the apostles of 12, and then he ministered to crowds of thousands of people, um, but all of that was about relationship, and you see Jesus throughout the Gospels having an important mission, being on an agenda to go somewhere, and always stopping for the one. Um, and that's always what I hear the Lord saying to me in my own ministry when I get discouraged, is Justin, it's always, it's always about the one. Maybe ministering to 15, maybe ministering to 500, but it's always about one at a time. Um, and just seeing one at a time, hearing one at a time, um, and one person at a time coming to know Jesus because of relationship with people who love them and who love him. Um, yeah, that's great. I, um, I, you know, as you know, we've talked about this off camera, but relationship to me is such a huge thing, and that's why that's my driving force in everything I do in terms of communications and in terms of looking at what we can do to um, bring people further into the like, relationship and to starting those conversations with them. So that's great. Um, so we're going to wrap here with uh, five questions similar to those of you who are members of the community. If you know the five questions from the um, quarterly that we have, same idea. Um, because I'm lazy and I don't like coming up with new ideas. So, um, question number one is name a book, podcast, movie, something that has had a large impact on your life. So currently, the Poco a Poco podcast done by the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal. They're based in New York, um, and they just talk about the spiritual life, how to have a spiritual life in the chaos and busyness of the world, um, and just the importance of relationship with Christ and prayer. Um, and every time I listen to an episode of that podcast, I find myself with a greater desire to pray than beforehand. So that's really been an inspiration to me. Yes. Um, and then you said you were a barista. Um, so what would your what is your favorite deep coffee, espresso drink? That sort of thing? What's your go-to? My go-to is black coffee. I drink black coffee every day. If I'm at a coffee shop and not getting black coffee, I'm probably going to get an oat milk latte with some sort of crazy flavor in it. I really like Irish cream. I like banana. Lavender mint was a favorite combination when I was working as a barista, but something crazy. <laughs> um, then who is your favorite saint and why? Saint Francis of Assisi. Um, he's a big one. He's a classic one. Um, but just I find myself really resonating with a lot of aspects of Franciscan spirituality, um, but in particular St. Francis's love for the poor um, and the way that he um, just like we were talking about earlier, just saw every person individually and saw Christ in them and chose to minister to them. Um, and just as his simplicity as well and love of nature. Yes. Um, so what is one thing that people watching or listening, however they're consuming, can uh, start doing today to help them grow in their faith life? Great. Um, but in particular, uh, prayer in silence, um, finding five minutes a day, ten minutes a day to be in complete silence and to just be with the Lord to shut off all distractions um, and to make it a consistent habit and a consistent pattern, even if it's for a short amount of time. And then final question, um, what do you have coming up either here or just elsewhere in your life that you're really excited about? I'm really excited about our, our young adult ministry here at Pete, how that's coming together. Um, we have our first young adult women's Bible study this Thursday. We have a young adult game night next Monday. Um, it's just a great community of young adults here. Um, and I'm enjoying meeting them. Great. Well, that's, I think, going to do it for us. We're going to call it. Um, so thanks for coming down to the studio. Um, and thanks for everyone for watching. Uh, hopefully this is something we're going to do a little bit more often, get people on camera a little bit more and talk about things. Um, maybe talk about topics that anyone is interested in, shoot us an email, uh, parishadmin at olpmn.org if you have things you'd like us to talk about. Um, I'm hoping to have other staff members come down, maybe some people from the community, maybe some teachers. Uh, ideally, we'll get Father Ellison here at some point too, maybe even Father Jack. So um, for all of us here at OLP, uh, God bless, and thanks for watching. <laughs>